man. Dude. My Steam music player has been just super buggy here lately. I don't know what's going on. Let's get another, uh, here, 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 here. Let's get some more music up. I apologize. I didn't realize I had quit playing. Here, 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 here. What am I looking for? What's up, guys? Good morning. Good day. It's Saturday, baby. You made it. Great job. There we go. That's what we're going with right there. All right. So... Another beautiful day, man, for gaming. We'll do the news, as always. Yeah, yeah. We'll do the news, and um, then we will probably be finishing up Disco. Disco Elysium. Um, it was a wild day yesterday, and we had a lot of fun. There was funny, sad, thrill, Thrills, drama, it was the whole package yesterday. So, um, I think we're really pushing towards the end game. Um, note this. It will not be quite as long as, of a stream today as we normally do. Um, sometimes the weekends tend to be a little bit shorter anyway, but today for sure um, is only going to be about a six and a half hour stream today. I forgot we have something going on with the family early afternoon, so... Um, what I was planning on doing was, uh, doing disco and then doing evil dead. That was the plan. What's up, Wick? What's up, buddy? What is that, dude? <laughs> Hype nom, dude. I like it. Um, what's up, man? So we will do the news. We'll do disco Elysium. We'll I'm see what time we have left over. If we have time left over. We're going to try out evil dead today. Note that you can go get unacceptable. I know gamer. I'm sorry, buddy. What's up, dude? Um, you can go get Evil Dead on Epic Game Store for free right now on PC, okay? So, if you're interested in playing the game, it's there. It's free. It just came out in May, and, uh, they're already giving it away for free this weekend. Just, or not this weekend, but for the next week. So, if you want to try it out, go grab it, okay? Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll probably only get about a six and a half hour stream in today. I do apologize. Tomorrow I'll go harder. Okay, tomorrow we'll get a full day in. All right, we'll play around, have some fun. But I do think we'll get uh, Disco finished today, okay? Other than that, I hope everybody's uh, doing great. And I hope that your weekend has been going well so far. I hope it keeps going that way. Let's get over here and do what we do. Let's get into this video gaming news segment, all right? Before we do, check it out. That is what we were listening to this morning. Subnautica. Oh, dude, let me change. Okay, okay. I'm failing right now. Hold on. I'm failing. You're going to work today, buddy? Oh, no, bro. I'm sorry, man. I guess at least you had a long one last weekend, but it still feels bad. I'm sorry, man. There we go. Now we should be good. My chat was in the wrong place. Apologies. I am not kidding. <laughs> Just trolls from Wick. Just trolls. No kids. Uh, no kiddings. Um, Subnautica OSD, okay? Good stuff. Good tunes. Good vibes. And um, I'm probably going to get down on playing this game pretty soon. I think so. I think so. But the OST is amazing. Uh, the game, I can tell you, is very highly rated. Um, people consensus have really enjoyed their experience of playing the game. So I recommend checking it out. Base building, survival, a uh, big world to explore, uh, underwater mostly, you know? So sounds like your jam. You should check it out. OST is good too. That's what we were listening to this morning. Let's get over here. Let's get into this. Bam. Bam, bam. All right. Everybody got their Java? You guys ready? Okay. Let's see what we got.
Yeah, we already kind of hit on this. You know, Samsung has been, what is the name of that service? I can't think of the name of the service right now that they have set up. Um, oh. This was initially just on the 2022 TVs. Worried about it. So Samsung's got this um, entire cloud gaming app for their own specific models of televisions, right? Their smart TVs. And, um, but it was just, it only rolled out to their brand new televisions, their, their 2022 TVs which basically allowed you to access, they just added two more uh, cloud gaming services to it, but the most notable are Xbox and Nvidia Cloud, um, where you can just plug in a controller or whatever peripheral and, and go, to, go to town, start playing games straight to the TV, no other uh, hardware needed. And it looks like they're rolling it out to some of their uh, previous gen, previous year uh, televisions as well. So uh, we'll take a look at that. I wasn't sure that their previous uh, generation TVs would have the hardware capabilities to do that, but apparently some of them do. So we'll take a look, okay? I'm not going to dive into this article. This says Apple Arcade still the best mobile game subscription. Look, there are a lot of cloud gaming, gaming subscription services, things like that. A lot of what is going to tell what is best is going to be based on each respective individual's personal situation, preferences, things like that, right? Yo, yeah, yo, you know what it is, dude? This is, this is what it is. Look, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think you got to see it yesterday, really. So this is what, uh, this is, this is, uh, we're Harry Dubois, dude. You see? That's, uh, so I kind of did this as a tribute night before last to our, our character in disco. You know, I did the, uh. Everybody was coming into the, <laughs> it's not quite as bushy as his. his. His is quite a bit longer, but this is all I had to work with right now. So I did a bit of a tribute to uh, to Harry, you know, because I thought we might finish the game yesterday, but and I think we got close, but we'll finish it today. So I left it. I left it for today too. I had a bunch of people coming into the stream though that were like, hey, it's Wolverine. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I did it. I did it for a good old Harry Dubois, you know? So, um... That's, that's what it was about. <laughs> so I probably won't have it after today, but it was fun. It was fun. Hey, hey, what's up? Yeah, man. Yeah, we got that. Okay, let's see. Um, Again, you know, all I would say really is there are a lot of different subscription services out there and being created as well um, for gaming, you know. Uh, I'm guessing there are a lot of people that are big users of Apple devices that are, are going to be, um, you know, utilizing Apple Arcade, whereas there are a lot of people that use you know, uh, Xbox consoles or Microsoft devices that are going to gravitate towards something like Game Pass. You know, uh, a lot of PlayStation users are going to gravitate towards something like um, PS Plus membership, you know, that subscription service. There are a lot of them out there. What I would say to people is um, this seems like it could be a little bit promotional, which is why I don't really feel like diving into it. Um I'm not saying that Apple Arcade is necessarily bad, but I think that anybody interested in gaming subscription services should just do some self-education on the pros and cons of each one that um, you are interested in being a part of. 
Because ultimately, I think what a lot of it comes down to is, you know, and we've talked about this before, is what you're investing into that subscription service. Uh, are you going to be able to invest enough time to, to get your money's worth out of it, right? And um, I think quite often a subscription or two is going to be worth it for most uh, avid gamers, right? But anything more than that, I mean, you're really kind of, I think, pushing the envelope for how much time you're going to be able to get out of a slew of subscription services based on what you're spending. It just varies. Do your self, you know, educate yourself. See what's going to fit your personal situation the best. They all have pros and cons, right? Crunchyroll is making a video game? What? Let's take a look at that. Classic PS1 series may return soon. I just go pull mine out of the uh, storage, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, baby. Uh, Switch has made two popular exclusives their lowest price ever, maybe. Is that what this is? Yes. I'll take a look at what those are. Um, GTA Online Leak teases big plans for other games from Rockstar. Let's see what that's about. That might actually be something worth reading from regarding Rockstar news. <laughs> yeah, you know, we hit on this yesterday. Look. Um, TLDR, the Chinese government just finally gave out their first, uh, licenses for developers and publishers, gaming developers and publishers within, uh, that country for the, it's the first, uh, what they, what we've seen over about the past year and a half to two years since they started really, uh, getting big on the regulations, regulating the, uh, gaming industry, right? is that about every three months average, three to four months, they will hand out a number of these licenses. Uh, it's not very many, really. Um, and Tencent finally got their first game license. Tencent is one of the biggest gaming uh, companies in the world, actually, and especially in China. <laughs> and... Um, they got their first license for a game in like the past, I think like 18, 16 to 18 months. So, I mean, this is why you're, you're seeing a lot of companies no longer really caring to do business in the video gaming industry in China. Whether it be companies out that, that are, you know, heavily based outside that are trying to, you know, release their games inside uh, China or vice versa. Games that are traditionally um, based out of China are looking to kind of move their way out because they're tired of dealing with these constraints. You're seeing a lot of it. Oh, God, here we go again, dude. Okay. Should Xbox fans be worried about the new Fable? Possibly. Potentially, we're going to read about this. Here's the deal. Um, God, what is the name of the company that is um, developing the new fable? It's almost sounding like this is a modern take on fable. If you choose to really look at the words used by some of the recent talk uh, from people involved in the development of that game. Um, what I'll say is that might not go over too well if this is a game that is not necessarily set the same way that the previous Fable games have been, you know? Um, as well as the fact that this is a developer that has is actually known for working on auto racing games. They've never really 
had any kind of dive into this type of genre. So that's another reason why people are a bit worried about the new Fable game, and rightfully so. We'll talk about it. Here's what I'll say. There are a lot of big developers right now that don't look like they can pump out hardly anything besides what they're used to pumping out. So why not give some other uh, developers a chance to try their hand at something outside their, their norm, right? Maybe it'll pay off. Um, we'll see. We'll talk about it real quick. Gamer. Uh, yeah, I mentioned about the PS Premium the other day. Uh-huh. Okay, so you decided to reactivate. Oh, sick, dude. Nice. Nice. Yeah, man, yeah. Um, again, uh, yo, good on you, dude. Good on you. Yeah, I mean, all across the board right now, um, there are just cells everywhere. Um, I know, especially in my part of the world, which is the U.S., and and uh, I think really like North America all the way across has a lot of, uh, of cells. But I know, especially in the U.S., it's this time of the year where stuff really starts hitting big cells. And, and I think really, you know, I mean, you can even look at... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 solid, dude. That's a nice little discount, man. That's a nice little discount. Um, a lot of what you'll see is like, um, just like where you found for like, you know, PlayStation or Xbox or uh, Nintendo. A lot of it, especially like if you're talking about tech stuff or the gaming industry, a lot of these retailers are worldwide, right? So quite often when they do these sales, they'll do them worldwide. So um, it might be, you know, the catalyst behind the sale, especially this time of year, is potentially because of the Black Friday craze and everything. But it doesn't mean that those sales won't be located in other parts of the world and everything, too, just so everybody knows. That's a good find, dude. Nice. Good on you, man. Good on you. Again, I mean, if anybody's in the market for anything right now, just keep your eyes open. Uh, there are a lot of sales all over the place right now. We've been touching on it here lately. And um, if you're in the market for anything specific, especially tech-wise, gaming-wise, because that's what we're about here, um, keep your eyes open, uh, especially over like the next week and a half. It's gonna be there's gonna be some big sales happening. That's awesome, dude. Thanks for letting me know. That's cool. Um. What? Nintendo doesn't even want you to have pictures of emulated Switch games. We'll talk about it. Um, look, I am not... Don't want to get out of bed? Don't. <laughs> uh, that's easy, dude. <laughs> uh, I'm doing it right now, dude, so you don't have to. All right? Gamer can't be working alone. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I respect it, dude. Um, I've talked about emulation a lot. I'm a fan of, of emulation because I think it's been a big help in preserving gaming history, right? I think emulation is um, a great thing for... Oh, this dog. Oh. <laughs> um, I think it's been a great thing for, for being able to preserve the history of gaming to a great extent. And um, ultimately, I'm like, you know... Emulation, especially if there's a, a developer that's not going to be giving you access to a game um, from previous generations of whether whatever platform it was on, um, being able to emulate that and still get a hold of it and play it and experience it and everything, I think is a, uh, is a good thing. But I don't think it's good for the industry for people to be emulating 
new consoles. But basically, pirating is what it is, right? You'd like a Hot Pocket? This dog, I let him up in the bed. He snuggles. Oh, bro. And is like a hot pocket. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're radiating that warmth, huh? Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. I don't know, man. You might just have to call in sick, dude. <laughs> um, the, uh... The emulating of new consoles is, is quite often the way it's utilized is emulating new consoles on other hardware, right? And you're accessing the games as ROMs. It's not, you know, most people are not turning the games that they own into these these uh, ROMs, right? Or, or the 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 uh, accessible um, executable games or for that, that emulator. So quite often what people are doing is, is they find a way to emulate that console on some other piece of hardware. It's, it's, you know, whether it be the switch or, you know, whatever new platforms are out there and, uh, consoles, what have you. And, um, then they just find, free versions of these games, these ROMs online, and, and they download them and they play them. They don't pay anything for them. That's not good for the industry, man. Um, it's just not. So, I mean, we talk a lot about, you know, the industry should be doing good things for us as the consumer. You know, it should be a, um, the developers and these businesses, these gaming businesses should have a, a really, um, dedicated what I'm looking for uh, I guess uh, like a like a dedicated business practices of, of trying to produce good content for us right as the consumer in the video gaming industry and and um, I truly believe that but at the same time we're not doing ourselves any favors by utilizing these kinds of mechanics to, uh, it hurts the industry. It hurts the industry all the way around, in my opinion. So that's kind of my take on it. Oh, Vampire Survivors on Game Pass. Uh, graphics, gameplay kind of throw you off. I'm fine with the graphics. I'm, f I'm fine with the graphics. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's just, it's old school stuff i mean it's a, it's a single developer you know what i mean it's not like and they obviously not that they're not that a single developer can't come out with anything more grandiose uh graphics wise or anything they absolutely can but um i think that uh the gameplay kind of throws you off yeah i mean it's it's more about just controlling the character right it's it's an auto shooter so you don't really do anything a lot of games have been built like that though i mean if you think about it a lot of games back in the day too especially like bullet hell kind of games like raiden if you know what raiden is um, a lot of those side scrolling kind of, um, bullet hell games, that's the way they were too. It was all about picking up, um, power ups and just avoiding damage. And that's basically what vampire survivors is as well. It's just, um, a more modern take on that kind of stuff. It's not a side scroller as much as it is, um, more open areas to explore. And, uh, it has the whole roguelite functionality thrown in as well. Yeah. It doesn't mean everybody's going to love it. But I think they did a pretty good job on it myself. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I haven't played it since uh, a, a few of the new updates have been in there, though. I don't know. If you haven't played very much of it, maybe try it just a little bit longer and see what you think. I don't know. I found it to be pretty entertaining. But I respect it if it's not really up your alley either, you know. Wick, how old's your dog, dude? 
He's adorbs, by the way. And do uh do the the dog and cat do they get along pretty well, man? <sighs> <laughs> Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are now horror games. Let's take a read about about that. That could be good. <clears throat> Uh-oh, RE4 Remake Discovery has some fans worried. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, there have been a lot of people hopping in Warzone 2.0. I'm more interested not in how many people are playing it, but, but what people's um, thoughts are of 2.0. Not even a year? Yeah, he looks young. Yeah. Is the cat cool with him? I'm yelling at Google, by the way, for some reason, or I was. Let's take a look, see if we have anything else to, to talk on today. Some days? Is he just too hyper for the cat right now because he's young? That might be the case. How long have you had uh, the pup now? He wants to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He just might be a little bit too much for the cat. The cat's not used to it, yeah. Cat likes to whoop him, dude. <laughs> Yo, cats are no joke, bro. They'll get down. They'll get down. No doubt about it. Oh, gamer. Yeah, dude. That's a little bit rough for the competitive online stuff, man. Yeah, I mean, look, I uh, I highly recommend anybody. Um, runs like a chicken. <laughs> Dude, I would love to see it. That's funny. Um, yeah, hardwiring in your your internet connection to your device is uh, it's a big it, it's a it's a a big deal, man. Usually over Wi Fi. Um, the the thing with Wi Fi is that um, there are two things to consider with uh, especially game you know any device really with Wi Fi. It's how fast of a speed can your router push out Wi-Fi? Ba I mean, obviously, a lot of that is going to be based on how good of an internet connection you have coming in, right? But how good of a router do you have that is pushing that wireless signal out? Also, how good is uh, the Wi-Fi adapter in your hardware uh, to be able to pull in the signal and push it back out? You know what I mean? Um, there are a lot of things to go into it, whereas like the hard wires is always just kind of the way to go if you can if you can swing it. I'll tell you this, dude. Had him a month now. Cool. Right on. He looks like a cool puppers, dude. Um, dude, my my router is on the complete opposite side of this room for me. It had to be, unfortunately. And I have, I have, <laughs> dude, how long is this Ethernet cable? <laughs> My Ethernet cable is extra long. Um, it's, 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 it's running a ways. I basically ran this thing like all the way around half of a, a big room and um, tucked it underneath uh, baseboards and, and stuff like that so it wouldn't show. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I know, I know the Wi-Fi struggles, dude. And you can usually tell when you're playing against somebody that's on Wi-Fi too, <laughs> depending on what game you're in, what kind of online uh, game you're in and stuff. Usually, you can tell. Um, it, it's kind of wild. Yeah, you'll see see people hit some pretty bad lag spikes when they're not on good internet and they're using Wi-Fi and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, dude, we got a pets channel, bro. We, we need pics of the pets. We got Mamzelles. Uh, we got Mamzelles in there, dude. Mamzelle uh, got pics of the pets up in there. Uh, her new little poodle. It's a little poodle, little toy poodle. Good night. That thing is so tiny, dude. So tiny. We need pics, bruh. All right. 
Sorry. Wait, what? Oh, I don't think that's worth looking at. Um, Yeah, Evil Dead video game is free to download and keep. Um, and Rogue Squ Squadrons is next. I talked about this yesterday. I'll just pull it up real quick. Look. Epic Games, right? What was it the 17th? So a few days ago, they changed over their free games from... Um, God, what was it previously? I can't even remember now. But now it's uh, Dark Deity and uh, Evil Dead the game, okay? And there's a Rumbleverse uh, cosmetic pack as well. But um, Evil Dead just came out in May. And um, it looks like it could be cool. Uh, so I actually installed it last night. And uh, we might get to try it out today. Depends on how long it takes to get through Disco Elysium. If not, we'll play it tomorrow. But Rogue Squadrons will be next. So go get your free games. Get your free content if you play Rumbleverse. Yeah. And uh, then just know that um, Star Wars Squadrons will be free starting next week on the 24th. They'll probably announce some other game to go along with it, too. Okay, random mode time. Let's go. Dude, that's Gab's kind of emote right there. Where's Gab's at? <laughs> you don't see. All right. Got that talked about. Let's keep moving. Uh, Multiverse of Season 2 news, okay. Nice, gamer. Nice. Yeah. Again, if you're not familiar, <laughs> you didn't hear this yet, Blizzard is no longer uh, collaborating with... Um... Oh, dude, why am I... Uh, I'm I'm totally blanking their name right now. Uh, bop 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 bop. Netties, dude. I kept wanting to say Tencent. And I knew it wasn't Tencent. Netties. Uh, Netties has been uh working with Blizzard for quite some time now to publish their games in China. Blizzard is no longer uh collaborating with them. So uh, right now, Blizzard games are not going to be accessible in China. For the foreseeable future, till they figure something else out, or I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, this is again, I think this is a big part of what's going down with Chinese government, and a lot of developers just are kind of, I think, at the point where they're like, uh, not really caring to do business in those those uh, borders anymore in that country, you know, so. If you weren't familiar, that's what's happening. We've touched on it already, and uh, we'll see what happens moving forward for Blizzard. And because look, man, they've got a lot of look. A lot of Blizzard titles are very popular all over the world, right? And uh, China is no exception. You talk about, you know, even their older titles like StarCraft and stuff are are still widely played competitive. Um, and, uh, China is one of those countries. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see what the, we'll see what happens. We'll see what this means and we'll see what happens moving forward. Young Great Gore, uh, director is confirming some in-game stuff. Let's take a look at that. Anybody seen Gungrave before? I almost started watching it, uh, here recently and I, I ended up not, but maybe I need to go back and take a look at it. I will say this. The Chainsaw Man show on Hulu, I think it's on Crunchyroll too, is actually hilarious. It is really funny. Um, I, I think the animation's great. It's really funny. There, it, There's only an episode that comes out every single week right now. So it's like, you know, if you if you get all caught up, I think there are six episodes right now. I think it comes out every Friday. So if you're caught up, you know, you're just kind of sitting there waiting for the next one, which is a little bit brutal. But um, if you haven't seen any of it yet, there are like six episodes just sitting there waiting for you right now. And, 
And uh, it's a pretty wild ride, and there's a lot of good comedy in it, too. I, I watched the newest episode. This is what I'll say. I watched the newest episode last night. And... I don't think it's very often, Pinky, what's up, buddy, that I watch a show and I, I'll just like bust out laughing out loud sometimes. I literally was doing that last night watching Chainsaw Man. Um, and that's not the only time that's happened watching that show. And again, there, there's only six episodes right now, but <laughs> that game has got some pretty good uh, comedy in it. it or that game, that, that show, that show does. So if you need something to watch and you've got Hulu or, or Crunchyroll, um, I'd say check out Chainsaw Man. Might not be for everybody, but I I find I find it enjoyable, entertaining, and funny. Harvest Stellar review. Let's take a look at this. Pinky, what's up, dude? How are you, man? <laughs> dude, <laughs> I just uh. PETA wants God of War Ragnarok to remove violence against uh, wolves in-game. What about uh, PETA talking to the wolves in-game to remove their, their violence against humans? You know what I mean? What about that? Where's the, uh, where, where, where's our, our, uh, you know organization to stand up for uh for the humans in game that the uh the wolves are are uh you know being violent against you know like i understand what why they get like this to an extent i mean it's they're like uh you know they see it peta sees this as a, an issue of um you know in game violence against animals promotes violence against animals in real life and <clears throat> dude that's not the case though look this is the same kind of stuff we talk about all the time that's like saying that any kind of violence in a video game promotes uh violent behaviors in people no matter what game they play it's not the truth dude that's not the truth it's it's been research all kinds of studies have been done research it's been proven that's not the case there are people in the world that have issues and they harm animals you know what i mean um because they have issues <laughs> thank you yikes bro yeah yeah so i mean um i i, I just it's not there for me, dude. I find this a little bit ridiculous. It's like Peter hitting back at a piece of entertainment, you know, um, about beasts in a game getting, you know, Lord, they might as well just, you know, go after every single video game company because most of them that have any kind of violence in them at all, there's some kind of beast in that game that, that is uh, getting a... a, a a shellacking, you know, so I don't know. It's a little bit wild. I'm not going to dive into that. That's just my two cents. I'm not diving into that. I don't feel like that's worth my time. The one setting that deflates playing Spider-Man Morales. What? Let's take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. Again, look, uh, Splinter Cell is free on Ubisoft, I think is what it is. It's actually in our Discord. Um, gamer deals. Yeah. Is that where it's at? I think that's where it's at. It is on uh, Ubisoft site. Yeah, we read about it yesterday. If you want a bigger, uh, a, a deeper look. Um, at why it's free, things like that. Um, look at yesterday's news segment, but just know that, yeah, this, ugh, I guess all I needed to do was read the flipping title, but this week at Ubisoft, Splinter Cell, uh, Splinter Cell team celebrates, uh, the 20th anniversary and, um, 
Splinter Cell, the uh, Splinter Cell that originally came out on Xbox One, is normally 10 bucks and it's free right now. So you can go grab it uh, on Ubisoft's platform, okay? Hey, what? What is this? Paragon. Paragon, the Overprime. It's going to be starting early access in December, guys. Mm. Okay, we'll talk about that. We got some news today. Let's stick with that. Yeah, we'll stick with that. Let's go. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's hop in it. Let's get a drink. Um, Gungrave is set to bring back its anime universe later this month with Trigun returning next year via the new anime series Trigun Stampede. General Director K. Kim took the opportunity to answer our questions when it came to bringing back uh, Yasuhiro Naito's gunslinging franchise. First arriving as a video game on the PS2 in 2002, the series went on to receive its own anime adaptation one year later, with the animators at Studio Madhouse bringing this tale of revenge to the small screen. Receiving 26 episodes, the new Gungrave Gore game will expand on the universe's story. Um, so basically asked if this was going to be a reboot. Quote, first came the original game, then the anime was produced due to the popularity of the game. Of course, storyline and character background has remained the same as before. But there are some minor, minor changes from the original game. Gore is a continuation of the storyline from the franchise set in the same universe. Kim then took the chance to expand on the different approach they are taking with the development of Gore versus the original game that first landed in 2002. It's more accurate to view it as we inherited the advantages of the previous title, then mixed in some features uh, today's gamers would expect to see from a current action game. Since Gungrave Gore was developed with, uh, in the full scope of the franchise, we can safely say there will be a lot of, uh, for the original fans to appreciate, while still fresh to newcomers. Um, unfortunately, while this game might be bringing us back into the anime universe that was first created by Naitao, don't expect a revival in a similar vein as Trigun, with Vash the Stampede set to return to the small screen next year, as the game director hasn't, quote, thought about next steps. Uh, we haven't thought about the next steps in the future of the ser series so far. What we think about the most is receiving approval from the gamers as a game. We just want you uh, users to have fun with our game and look forward to seeing what they think of Graves' return. I'm probably going to have to go watch Gungrave now. I've never watched it. I'm going to have to go watch it now. I came really close here lately because I was like, oh, that sounds like that could be good. And um, I found something else and turned it on instead. I don't even remember what it was. But I need to go back and watch it now, I guess. Harvest Stella Review, an escapist JRPG with farming sim surprises. All right. The video game industry has no shortage of farming simulators. Dude, there's no doubt about that. But even with the excess, fans eat them up from Stardew Valley uh, to Harvest Moon. Look, Harvest Moon is iconic for this genre. And um, that's where I really got into these games whenever I was young, uh, like Super Nintendo Harvest Moon stuff. And Stardew Valley, I've always kind of seen, and I haven't played it yet. I want to. I own it, and I want to play Stardew Valley. I'm afraid of how much time I'll end up spending in that game. I'm going to be honest. That's one of my things that I'm scared about. <laughs> I'm scared I'll end up spending a lot of time in that game. But I, uh, I, I do think we're going to play it here before too long. Um, I've always seen Stardew Valley as kind of like, Harvest Moon on steroids. Um, there are juggernauts in the space, while other titles like Room Factory have worked to di diversify what a simulator can do. Now Square Enix is entering the world of farming sims with Harvestella, an ambitious JRPG loaded with life simulation goodies. Thanks to its distinctive art and pacing, Harvestella is one of the genre's most promising entries in some time. The game works as most life simulators as players begin by creating an avatar who will live in a fanatical world ruled by giant crystals called sea slides. 
As the days pass and seasons change, these crystals keep nature balanced, but that script is flipped whenever quietus, the season of death, comes around. This brutal period has grown longer each year, and with no end in sight, players must venture to stop quietus from permanently throwing their world out of sync. Of course, this JRPG has the standard combat you'd expect. You can align yourself with one of 12 classes, and if we're being honest, Harvestella doesn't rock the boat when it comes to battle. Combat mechanics are smooth. The ability to fight with up to two other allies is a nice touch. Even as the, uh, the game progresses, I didn't find the combat to be overly difficult, so casual RPG fans will do well with the system. But if you're looking for punishing combat, Harvestella isn't the thing you're looking for. However, the game does shine in its story and simulation events. Elements, excuse me. Players can explore the villages they enter before taking time to farm, fish, cook, and craft. These systems are explained in several painstaking tutorials, but the payoff is worth it. Between these simulation elements and its side quests, Harvestella feels incredibly fleshed out, and much of that is thanks to its art direction. As always, Square Enix's whimsical style shines in this new release, which makes it one of the prettiest life simulators out there. At its core, Harvestella is an exciting promise of things to come for RPG lovers as Square is ready to bring its own farming sim to life. From its gorgeous visuals to its side quests, there's plenty to do and look at while playing. However, players should temper their expectations should they believe Harvestella to be a straightforward sim. This ambitious project is more JRPG than a simulator, and its pacing proves as much. If you're only looking to farm and woo locals, Harvestella will prove more than you can handle. But if a JRPG with simulation traits surround, uh, sounds appealing to you, excuse me, Harvard Stella is just what you've been waiting for. Interesting. Uh, let's, let's look this up real quick. Let's watch a trailer. Probably this one. Available now trailer. Let's go with this guy. We'll watch this one. P14, guys, be careful. A planet with four giant crystals called Seas Light. Seas light controls the four seasons Seems and bestows its loud. blessings upon all living things. In your life here, amongst the lush nature of Lethe Village, you till the land, raise crops, and live alongside the bounty of the seasons. And yet, at each turn of the season it comes, withering all life in its wake, quietus. Set out on a journey with your friends to uncover the mysteries of quietus. The road ahead will lead to all kinds of adventure and new encounters, and eventually, the very truth of the world itself. May lost souls find repose. I'm coming to help. Humanity, all you have to do is accept the death I have designed for you. Good morning. Now it's my turn. We're both just humans. I don't know what you think, but I feel calm around you for some reason. I really like that about you. This is the story of those who live alongside the seasons of life and death. Harvestella. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean it's out now, and uh, again, <clears throat> if you're into uh, JRPGs and farming simulators, this might be right up your alley. Okay. 
Uh, the article that we just read about this before we found the trailer uh, rated it at a 3 out of 5. So you're talking about uh, on a scale of 10, they would have rated it at a 6. That's a uh, respectable grade. Nothing. You're not going to be blown away by it if if they're on point with their review and, and you experience the same that they have. Um, not that that is necessarily going to be the case, but if so, um, it could be enjoyable, but probably not going to be blown away or anything. But could be a mashup of some stuff that, uh, you know, the JRPG farming sim stuff could, could really get some people uh, interested that like both those genres. So there you go. Bro. Yikers, that was way zoomed out. Um, so the one setting that deflates playing Spider-Man Miles Morales on PC. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales on, is available on PC now. Following up the smash success of the base game, Marvel Spider-Man on PC earlier this year, like the uh, original release, Miles Morales is packed with the latest PC gaming tech and smoothly polished run on different hardware. It's a great PC port, except for the DLSS 3 frame generation, that is. Um, NVIDIA's latest upscaling tech joins Intel XESS and AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, FSR, uh, in Miles Morales. They're all great upscaling options, but the unique uh, frame generation capabilities of DLSS 3 are a sore point. If you plan on picking up Miles Morales on PC, make sure to keep DLSS frame generation turned off to avoid an occasional mess of AI image generation. Yikers. Yeah, that looks a little bit rough. Um, Miles Morales joins a growing list of games that support DLSS 3. This tech combines DLSS Super Resolution, which is available to all RTX graphics cards, with DLSS frame generation. On... Um, the NVIDIA 4000 series uh, graphics cards, um, your GPU can generate a unique frame every other frame with AI massively improving performance. You're going to pay for it, too. If you're going to go jump into the 4000 series graphics cards, get that wallet ready. One frame is rendered by your graphics card. One is from the AI, and back and forth they go. And indeed, DLSS 3 massively improves performance, especially with the heavy CPU bottleneck in Miles Morales. The compromise is image quality with frame generation, which is particularly nasty in the fast-paced action that comes with any Spider-Man release. The super resolution portion still runs and looks fantastic. You can see a video of a few gameplay segments in the video above with DLSS frame generation turned on. You're able to mix and match frame generation with DLSS super resolution, XESS, or FSR. But I kept upscaling turned off to get a clear view into what frame generation was doing. I captured this footage at 120 frames per second in 4K with just DLSS frame generation turned on and slowed it by 50%. Um, Keep in mind, encoding artifacts and YouTube compression when watching the video, there are definitely issues where the video doesn't show the full quality of playing a game on an actual screen. Combat sections see the biggest issues, especially with the snowy cityscape of Manhattan that Miles Morales is set in. The snow is a pain point itself. As you can see in the two screenshots below, in the rendered frame, the snow shows up perfectly, but it vanishes in the AI frame. Yeah. So you can see the, the, the snowflakes. That's what they're talking about, right? Not the, not the snow that's layered on the ground, but the actual um, overlay of the snow falling, right? Um, it's gone. It's virtually gone here. You can see a little bit, but uh, yeah, the AI is having a tough, tough time with it. Uh, that's a consistent trend. Particles like snow disappear with the AI frame, which manifests as a faint flickering with frame generation on it. It's never an issue in slow sections and much less notable when you're swinging around the city. But Miles Morales is a game where you're constantly in motion, beating up baddies and flying through dense city streets. Having the image fall apart when there's any object in quick motion isn't ideal for a game like this. To illustrate how stark a difference there can be, you can see the AI frame stacked up against a natively rendered frame below. One was captured with frame generation turned on, then the other with it turned off. 
So they aren't sequential frames. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, this has to be the AI, right? That has to be. Just to show that this isn't an issue with encoding, here's the frame immediately after for both scenes. Streaking lines disappear, and tapping to the next frame in the scene, they return. Wait. Oh, is that that's kind of what they're talking about there, huh? That's why this looks so weird, too. I think this is actually the uh. They should have, like, captioned these. Yeah, immediately after for both frames, huh? The issue extends beyond fast combat and flashy finishing moves as well. DLSS frame generation doesn't take into account elements on your screen like the HUD. With upscaling, these elements are ignored and masked out because they aren't demanding to show on screen. And um, reducing the quality is very noticeable. DLSS frame generation tries to create a new frame, HUD and all, leading to unfortunate situations where the HUD smears across the screen like you can see in the screenshots below. Weird. Although DLSS frame generation doesn't make Miles Morales unplayable, the unstable quality becomes noticeable once anything in the screen starts moving quickly. The good news is that uh, DLSS Super Resolution, FSR, and XESS all provide solid performance improvements with upscaling, so I'd recommend sticking sticking with those. Um, yeah, a lot of work still needs to be done on it. Uh, that's the way technology flows, though, right? I mean, um, so I'm not going to read the rest of that. I'll let you guys, we have, we have enough news to get to today i'm not i'm not going to dive into the rest of that but that's what i think uh the gist of what you need to know there is um the the frame generation is the the big new technology in uh in video's new cards right that's the um big promotion from the, I mean, obviously the the tech's going to be more powerful um But ultimately, I mean, for the price point you're paying for a 4,000 series card over that same level of a 3,000 series card, it's, it's up there. You're paying a good chunk more uh, for these 4,000 series cards. And, and the performance-wise, other than some of this new tech like the frame generation stuff, which ultimately, as you can see, is not fully fleshed out yet, right? It's good stuff. I mean, it, uh, you know, that's that's tech, tech evolution, and it's a big deal for uh, gaming. I, I truly think it is, but it's just not fully fleshed out yet. So um, just know that if you're having some issues with games, um, like maybe Miles Morales, with this kind of weird stuff going on in frames, it might be because that uh, is toggled on. Yeah? Yeah. The um, DLSS frame generation stuff might be turned on. So if you turn it off, you might have a bit better experience. Okay. Um, Paragon. There you go. The Overprime will fire into early access in December. All right. 
December 8th, early access, Netmarble has announced that Paragon is back, but in a new form. Paragon, the Overprime, will arrive in early access on December 8th as a very different challenge. While you might know Netmarble for its mobile endeavors, the publisher behind Nino Cooney Cross Worlds, Worlds and Seven Nights is about to reboot an ill-fated franchise. Epic's promising action-adventure Paragon never made it to full release, but now Netmarble is set to turn that unfortunate outcome into an opportunity on 3 December. A free-to-play PC MOBA called Paragon, the Overprime, is due to come screeching into early access, bringing a rebirth for plenty of new and returning faces. Um, players who have already tried out Overprime during testing have busily been picking from a range of heroes, each with their own skills and capabilities, and jumping into a frantic battle for the enemy base. In a high-fidelity experience, players must make the correct choice when synergizing talents and picking the right time to push across a myriad of environments. While this all sounds pretty familiar for anybody dabbling in a bit of RuneScape, uh, and Smite, uh, the response from initial testers seems to be general, generally positive. If nothing else, this is a chance to see what Netmarble has done with the original Paragon asset. Um, in addition to quenching our curiosity, anybody playing in the game's early access will get to try out a roster of 27 heroes, including Zena. Zena is a digital human be, uh, human developed by Met Metaverse Entertainment, a subsidiary of Netmarble. Why is everybody trying to use Meta as their name for crap, dude? Dub the Lightbringer, Zena is a virtual idol that was summoned by Shinbi's Phantom Wolves from the Earth to Planet Prime. Zena moves through the warfield with splendid yet action-packed visuals and attacks enemies with a distinctive sword made just for her. Powered up with Shinbi, they are coming to stop the upcoming crisis in the universe. Um, check this out. Let's look. Uh, it said it's going to be on Steam too, yeah. So, we've touched on this uh, a little bit previously, but let's watch this real quick. New monsters! Okay. They actually have gameplay of it. I don't want just cinematics, dude. Show me some gameplay. Alright, here we go. Check it. Let's see. I've never been really big on MOBAs, but I think um, it, it's like, I've dabbled in like a few things, like I tried out League of Legends just a little bit, see what, what it was about, and it was okay, but it's nothing that like kept me um, wanting to play the game. Something like this, that isn't just all top down, it's a little more third person, um, and more action based. I could maybe get into this a little bit more.
Yeah, I bet that character is so slow. Yikers. Oh, wild. Interesting. I thought he was dead, dude. I'm not gonna lie, dude. This looked pretty interesting to me. I'm, I'm probably gonna try this out. Pinta kill. Paragon the Overprime. All right. It is uh, Steam and Epic. Um, and it is coming, they're saying December 8th, early access, December 8th, yeah, cool, so, uh, we'll probably dive in here and play some of this, actually, this looks pretty neat, to me anyways, so, free to play, dude, get some community members in, have some fun, let's see what's up, cool, if you need more info, or you want to see that article yourselves, it's in chat. There you go. Um, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are now horror games thanks to these disturbing bugs. <laughs> dude, it's so good. It's so good. Oh my god, dude. Look how big they are, dude. Look how little they are. This is like the size they're supposed to be. Holy crap. There's been a lot of chatter about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet bugs on launch day. Certainly a lot of talk about it. But now we've just uh, crossed the line from performance issues and visual artifacts to true nightmare fuel. You see that thing in the image above, right? It's not just me. It's got such a creepypasta or SCP vibe. I've got to I've got to make sure. That comes from a clip by a Japanese Twitter user showing off some of the uh, side effects of the game's multiplayer features. Apparently sometimes when a co-op partner Hops aboard a Pokemon mount, they just go full attack on Titan, dude. <laughs> That's actually great, man. We haven't seen that specific glitch replicated elsewhere just yet, but it seems more than one upsetting visual misstep happens in multiplayer. Take a look at the clip uh, from Reddit below. A pair of trainers attempt to go for a selfie just for a fletchling flies through one of their heads gets stuck flapping on the rock wall in the background. <laughs> the trainer in the background then starts clapping by dislocating her own elbow and repeatedly slapping the misshapen limb. <laughs> misshapen limb, sorry. Misshapen limb. That's so good. Uh, admittedly, I skipped scorn. Well played. You didn't miss much. Uh, but Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are quickly becoming the most disturbing horror games I've seen all year. It seems these specific terrors are tied to playing uh, with a co-op partner. So for once, safety comes from being alone. Players have been able to find some temporary relief from Scarlet and Violet's performance issues by simply resetting the game, but that's not enough to get Pokemon fans fully uh, to fully overlook the duology's problems. That's actually hilarious, dude. That is that is some terrifying stuff. <laughs> Yo, look how bad this game looks, though. Like, I understand this is a screenshot and everything, but this this game does not look visually striking. It looks pretty bad. I'm not just talking about this buggy glitch thing here. Dude, this game does not look good. Nintendo needs an upgrade, dude. Resident Evil 4 Remake Discovery has some fans worried. A new discovery about the upcoming remake of Resident Evil 4 from Capcom, which is scheduled to release on March 24th of this coming year, has some fans looking forward to the game a bit worried. However, these worries are unfounded as they are based on a false presumption. The worries stem from the new ESRB rating for the game. For those that don't know, the ESRB is the organization that rates games for release in North America. In other words, they are responsible for determining what a game's rating should be. As you would expect, the remake of Resident Evil 4 has been awarded an M for mature rating for blood and gore, intense violence, strong language. None of this is surprising or eye-catching. What has caught the eye 
of some through is uh of some though is the ESRB's note that there are in-game purchases. Many are now worried the game will have microtransactions, presumably via some type of unannounced multiplayer mode. This could be true, but previous Resident Evil games have also had this distinction, and that's because you're going to sell any DLC content, it gets lumped under in-game purchases by the ESRB. Okay. In other words, there's no reason to sound the alarms like some have just yet. PS5 Portable looks interesting. Have they, has there been new... Uh, I mean, this is not... A... Uh, or sure thing yet, right? Is that what you're talking about? Do you have an article, Gamer? You want to link me something? Um, we read where they were... Um, when did we read that? About a month, month and a half ago? PlayStation was really interested in developing and might be developing... Um, their own handheld again, if that's what you're talking about. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, there's no, this is not a surprise that Resident Evil 4 Remake is going to be, uh, M for Mature, right? 17 plus rated. Um, there's always going to be concerns from people about, microtransactions being put into games, but we'll see if it's just DLC stuff or if it's actual microtransaction shops, what we'll see what it is. Yeah. All right, dude, I'll see if I can look something up. I don't know. It didn't come, come across in the news. So we've touched on it previously, but I didn't know. Uh, I haven't heard anything official from PlayStation about uh, them for sure making that at this point. I've seen some things about, if I recall correctly anyways, I've seen some things about um, them being interested, having potentially filed some patents and things like that to get it moving along, but I hadn't heard anything official about it. it for sure going to be something that comes to fruition yet. So I'll, I'll see if I can look it up, uh, see if there's anything new. Multiverse Season 2 begins with uh, Magnificent Marvin the Martian announcement. Warner Brothers Games kicked off the launch of Season 2 of Multiverses this week, which features the later edition of the amazing Marvin the Martian as an upcoming playable character. Along with the iconic Martian, Season 2 will also feature a new map that will have fans of Game of Thrones very excited. Unfortunately, while Season 2 of Multiverses has already begun, fans will have to be patient until Marvin the Martian and the new gameplay map become available. Um, the new Game of Thrones map uh, is a Westeros-inspired, has Westeros-inspired hazards, some new iconic theme music. Um... Season 2 Battle Pass for the game does offer a variety of free items players can now earn in-game, including the Baker Street Tom and Jerry character variants from Tom and Jerry, Tea Time Rain Dog variant, and a Pixel Fin profile icon from Adventure Time. Players who unlock the premium Battle Pass for Season 2 can also unlock more rewards, including Scooby-Doo's Astronaut Velma, Looney Tunes' uh, Maestro, Maestro Bugs Bunny, and the Arya Yawn Taunt for Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. Um... Both the free and premium battle pass have 50 tiers of earnable rewards, okay? Another exciting mode for Multiverses Season 2 includes the Multiverses Fall Showdown. This consists of a 2 versus 2 online tournament series with a $60,000 prize pool. The North American East, West, and Europe finals are slated for this weekend on Sunday, November 20th. Uh, more details on the tournament are available at start.gg. On Monday, November 21st, Multiverses will celebrate the 80th anniversary of the iconic Looney Tunes character, Tweety Bird. This will include a special Happy Bird Day Tweety Ring Out that will be available as a free item for all players. Yep, uh, Multiverses is free to play. 
It is on PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC. Cool. Saw a picture. That was about it. Okay. Yeah. I'll see if I can find anything. But um, usually if, if something like that, uh, if there's any kind of news that we hadn't hit on yet, usually it would come across uh, fairly quickly in our searches. But I'll see if I can find anything, dude. Thanks. Uh, should Xbox fans be worried about the new Fable? Maybe. Um, the short answer is yes. At this point, there are a few red flags that suggest fans could be disappointed when the series finally returns after years of being dormant. The new game, which is seemingly a reboot, was announced on July 23rd of 2020 with a cinematic teaser trailer. Since then, it's been crickets. In a vacuum, this isn't that noteworthy or worrying, but the context is. First red flag was present at the time of its reveal. The game is being developed by Playground Games. Founded in 2010, Playground Games has shipped five games in its 12 years of existence. And these five games are Forza through Forza 5. Like I said before when we found this article, you know, um, does that mean that they necessarily won't do a great job on um, something like this title? You know, no doing an RPG um, like Fable not necessarily but they don't have experience uh, releasing those kinds of titles either so I think that for a lot of, and look Fable is iconic right there are a lot of people that love the Fable games um, and it, it has been gone for quite some time so the announcement of a game like this coming back around, there's a lot of hype for that. There's a lot of excitement for that. And um, for those people that are excited, there's bound to be a little bit of uh, hesitation on finding out that the developer behind the game literally has only ever done automobile racing games. You know? So... Does that mean they, they'll do a bad job? No, it does not. But there's a little bit of concern that comes along with that. The difference between making a racing game and open world action RPG is substantial and would require have required lots of hiring, a difficult process in its own right. This is the first red flag. The second red flag is the reports of the scuttlebutt that the game has been having some development issues. Difficult to know how much weight should be put into unofficial information, but even a former developer hinted at these very issues. And to an extent, this ties back into the first point because you would expect the team to have trouble diving into a new genre, especially if it means onboarding lots of new employees into your system. Yes, this is the other thing that we read about recently. The third and final red flag comes straight from Matt Booty, the head of Xbox Game Studios. During a recent interview, Booty said Playground Games is aiming to deliver a modern take on the series. This was immediately met with hesitancy and worry from fans. Of course, modernizing an old series isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the language used by Booty screams of corporate jargon for broadening the game's appeal to a more casual audience. That has fans of the games from yesteryear worried. Absolutely. Look, I don't think there's anything... There, there are different ways to take the uh, this statement, a modern take on the game, right? Um, obviously... Fable hasn't been around for quite some time. And the gaming industry and technology itself has evolved quite a bit since then. So um, modernizing a new Fable game is bound to happen to an extent. But it depends on what exactly they meant in regards to the context of a modern take. You know, Um Taking Fable from what Fable has always been in that kind of medieval-esque, um, you know, funny environment, that universe, you know, and trying to spin it into something different and more modern, if you will. Could be a potential bad play. 
<laughs> we will just have to see what exactly this uh, – it's going to take time for us to determine what exactly this means. And um, there's worry. No doubt about it. But who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe they'll blow it out of the water. Here's the hoping. I think anybody that's a fan of the old Fable games is really, really hopeful – that they're going to do a great job on it. You know? Nintendo doesn't even want you to have pictures of emulated Switch games. Um, don't even think about putting a picture of Breath of the Wild on your Steam Deck. You hear me? Nintendo will be sending agents to your, uh, your place of residence, man, to take you down. Nintendo has gone on another emulation-related DMCA spree, but this time the company's target is... Uh, let me check my notes here. Pictures of Switch games. Nintendo has notoriously, uh, historically been very, very bad about um, giving people access to older titles and and um, being against emulation, all encompassing forms of emulation. Um, where, like I said, talking previously, I'm not a fan of, of emulation being used to get people around the uh, idea of actually purchasing new consoles, uh, purchasing new games, which is what a lot of people use emulation for. I don't think that's healthy for the industry, but emulation has been a very, very, very useful tool in keeping the history of gaming alive. Giving people access to those games that otherwise would have died, you know, because the developers are, are uh, of the game, these, these uh, historic games, these older games, are either uh, not interested in giving people access to the game themselves, or the developer is no longer, you know, producing content or actually even a business, or there are all kinds of different reasons why. But emulation is a very, very useful tool for old titles. I do not, I am not a fan of people using emulation to circumvent um, keeping the industry healthy and purchasing games, purchasing the hardware. Um, I don't think that's right. But Nintendo has is, is historically been very, very against emulators all the way around, which I don't agree with. Um, Steam Grid DB is a site where users can upload custom images built for use in, a, in the Steam library. Many of the images take the form of alternate headers or Xbox art for games that are already on Steam. So you can customize how those games appear in your library. But Steam Grid DB is primarily used when you add a non-Steam game to your library, such as, for example, a console game you're playing through an emulator. Switch emulators have gotten particularly robust over the years, and they've become particularly desirable since the launch of the Steam Deck. Clearly, even somebody at Valve had been making use of a Switch emulator on the handheld. Yeah, they had. We saw that. Nintendo hasn't been happy about the fact, even going after YouTube videos demonstrating how to install Switch emulators to the device. Here's what I will say about Nintendo as well, though. They're really, 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 really trying to drag out the Switch. The Switch is old. The Switch is old. They are doing their very best to not have to upgrade it. And it's past time, in my opinion. The Switch is old. It does not look good. It looks old. It looks old. And I think a lot of developers are uh, getting kind of held back to a, an extent a decent extent at this point, by the limitations of the uh, Switch hardware. And um, again, if you take a look historically, consoles, major consoles, will turn over to a new generation roughly every five to six years. The Switch is currently in year seven, and Nintendo has even come out publicly here, here recently and said, we're going for 10 years with it. Granted, it's still selling, but 
Ah, uh, it looks terrible. Um, they've issued a DMCA takedown notice against Steam Grid DB for images related to six Switch games: Pokemon Scarlet, Pokemon Violet, Splatoon Three, Xenoblade Chronicles Three, Super Mario Odyssey, and Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. The announcement was made on the site's Discord channel via GBA Temp. Some users are already attempting to re-upload the affected images, though it remains to be seen how long they'll remain in place. Others are uploading goofy DMCA-friendly versions of the box art. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, Steam Grid DB only hosts images for you to import into your Steam library. The site does not host the ROM or ISO files. You would need to actually pirate a video game. The selection of games affected by the DMCA notice is pretty strange, too. There are hundreds, perhaps thousands, of other Nintendo games represented on the site, many of them on Switch. It simply seems Nintendo is taking whatever strange small steps it can to keep its biggest Switch games from being associated with Steam or the Steam Deck. Yep. Okay. Interesting. I'm sure we'll see something else about what uh, what happens with this moving forward, but time will tell. GTA Online leak teases big plans for other games from Rockstar. Rockstar is possibly preparing some sort of way to access a library of its older games via GTA Online's GTA Plus service. Rockstar Games has some of the best video games out there, from Grand Theft Auto to Red Dead Redemption to Bully. Um, Rockstar has created some of the most beloved franchises out there. The studio is praised for its storytelling abilities while mixing in fantastic sandbox gameplay that keeps players coming back for more. They've also shown they're not just a one-trick pony by mixing in games like Midnight Club, The Warriors, and even a table tennis game amongst all of its violent game uh, crime games. However, Rockstar has slowed down in recent years and has only released one game since Grand Theft Auto V came out in 2013, meaning many are longing for a bit of variety from the developer. Not only that, but they got to a point where even the other games they had out that people were still interested in playing, uh, even uh, like in an online capacity too, such as uh, Red Dead Redemption Online, they uh, had no real vision of, of bringing any kind of content to those games. They only really cared about Grand Theft Auto V. While that may, be, may not exactly be in the cards, Rockstar Games is apparently toying with the idea of making its older games readily available. According to Rockstar Insider Tez2, a recent survey went out to GTA Online players about the game subscription service GTA+. Plus. The Insider noted the survey asked if players would like to see free access to classic Rockstar Games titles. Uh, now, given this is about GTA+, Plus, it could mean that Rockstar is planning to make its older games more widely available on modern platforms, and GTA+, Plus would, be, would just be a way to get them at no extra cost. It remains to be seen how this would work, what games would be offered, and if they'll be remasters or just straight ports. A lot of older Rockstar games are already backwards compatible on Xbox. Uh, Xbox does a great job with backwards compatibility. Uh, shout out to Xbox for that, because some of the other major console players, PlayStation, is not very good about it have been ported to PS4 or have been remastered. Of course, some fans still want to see some games get the remake treatment like Max Payne 3, but it's unclear if that's in the cards at the moment. Given this is also part of a survey, this could also amount to nothing. So, yeah, don't necessarily get your hopes up. But they're at least it shows they're at least entertaining that idea, right? So we'll see what happens. Uh, gamer, have you seen Play of Xenoblade Chronicles 3? It's not that I'm not a fan of, of, like, I've seen Xenoblade. Even whenever I saw the trailer for Xenoblade, I felt like, um, on the Switch, it looks dated to me. It looks like any anything they try to make for the Switch, uh, it, it looks jagged. It looks rough. And it's, it looks like, to me, the hardware is really holding back developers for what they would want to potentially be doing with these titles. I think Nintendo has gotten away with um, stretching this console out because a lot of their games... Are, because Nintendo is definitely a, a different console than what Xbox and PlayStation is. There are not nearly as many games that are um, done in an art style to look realistic or anything like that, right? It's more of 
you'll see a lot more of cartoony style stuff. Um, than you will on the other consoles. You know what I mean? It's just, it is what it is. It's always been that way. And um, not that there haven't been some games that port over or, or that have been uh, made to try to look more realistic on the Switch. That's not what I'm saying. But generally, that's, that's the case. Uh, but I'll say this. The Switch is, is old. I think Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I remember seeing the trailer, and it wasn't that the gameplay or anything like that looked bad, but about everything I see that comes out for, for the Switch nowadays, I go, that doesn't look great. It looks like old tech to me, man. It looks like old console stuff. It doesn't look like developers are able to get done on the Switch um, what they would probably potentially like to get done on a Nintendo console, on any console. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's it's uh, not necessarily that I'm not a fan of how it looks. I can just see the age that has taken on the Switch. Ultimately, here's the deal. I've said this before. The Switch is not a traditional console like an Xbox or PlayStation. It's already at a disadvantage in regards to this fact. Okay? When you're talking about a traditional console, um, it's more like PC hardware. You get big, bigger, at least, chunkier pieces of hardware that are more power hungry. Yeah? Um, because of what they do. And I'm not knocking on the Switch for what it, it is and what it does. The Switch is a fantastic console. But you cannot deny the fact that because it is a mobile console, it was built in a way to use hardware that is less power intensive and therefore ages faster. It is not as powerful as anything you're going to find on a new console, right? And not only that, but they're trying to stretch this console out further than what you'll see any other console maker try to do, which doesn't make any sense. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you can't tell me you look at, like, game trailers for this. I mean, it looks jagged. It doesn't look smooth. I don't see any kind of trailer come out for a a, a Nintendo game, like uh, even the new the new Pokemon games. It doesn't look smooth, and that's what I see for like every trailer that comes out for the Switch. It doesn't look smooth graphically. It looks jagged. It looks like um, it looks like they can't polish it up to be visually. What what hardware can do nowadays? You know what I mean. It it definitely looks like an old handheld console is what it looks like to me. Does that need Does that mean that the games are unplayable or unfun? Or, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I do think that uh, I, I I don't think I know that the hardware in that. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Keith, what's up, dude? No, dude, look, man, we're we're Harry Dubois. We're Harry Dubois, dude. <laughs> I mean, you can, it, 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 there's no, there's no denying it. You go look at the hardware. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're just uh, paying tribute to our main character in, uh, you know, in Disco Elysium right now. Cause we're about to finish the game, man. That's what we're doing. You go look at the hardware in, in the switch and compare it to, um, the hardware in, you know, PS5 or, or Xbox, it doesn't, there is no comparison. Even comparing the hardware in a Switch to the, the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck is, is head and shoulders above what the, the Switch is. At the time when the Switch was released, that was modern hardware, you know? But again, um, 
has 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 mobile hardware, which is basically you know that's that's what the switch is built on. Has it come a long ways over the years? Absolutely, absolutely. I would say it has come an even further um, evolutionary process since the switch was released, which is why the Steam Deck is so amazing, right? But you're talking about taking, and again, the Switch is an amazing console for what it is. But I don't agree with Nintendo stretching it out. It doesn't. Everything I see looks like old school stuff, man. Um, and I do think the developers are constrained by the hardware uh, because it, by proxy, just is mobile technology. It is not big, chunky, power-hungry stuff to begin with. And you're trying to stretch it out already seven years, you know. There's 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 no real arguing with it. It's that's just the nature of technology. It's what it is. And um, I mean, when you talk about was I not a fan of the way Xenoblade 3 looked, it's not that I wasn't a fan, it's that I it looks dated. It looks old to me. When I feel like if it looks like last gen's. It looks like last gen or even maybe before that kind of graphics. Um, and don't get me wrong, there are a lot of developers nowadays that make games to look old, right? I don't think that's the case on the Switch. I think there are a lot of developers that want their games to look nice and new and smooth, and I think they can't. I think that's what I'm trying to get at here. Um... So, that's my take. I, you can't, there, there is no arguing the fact that the hardware in the Switch is, is old. You can't. You can't argue it. It, again, it's old at this point. It already inherently on release wasn't going to be as powerful as um, a traditional console was. And so... Yeah. Well, it's I don't think it's necessarily about um well, I mean, okay, so here's the thing. Um So, let me just give you a a quick uh I mean, look, man, th this is this is the difference between something like um, even just uh, a last-gen console in the Switch. I'm not even talking about PS5. I'm talking about because um, there have been games that are, are noted to be beautiful, um, even though The Witcher is old at this point, too. The Witcher got ported to Switch. You know what I mean? And um, so I'm not saying the Switch can't run these games, but what I am saying is that anything that gets moved over to a Switch that is, and I mean, you go look at gameplay comparisons too, you'll, you'll notice a significant difference. Um, like a side by side of even like last gen PlayStation, PS4 to Switch, Witcher Three, it's significant. It's significant. Um, and again, I just um, I, it's not that I think they they can't get stuff done on the Switch. It, they're just there's no denying the fact that because of what the Switch hardware is inherently. And because of now how old it is, too. It's just not there for them, man. You know? Well, I mean, we're, and we're talking about older... I mean, Skyrim's an old game, too, Keith. You know? When was Skyrim released, dude? So, um... I'm not saying it won't run well. Um, I do definitely think and know... Oh, yeah, yeah, Keith. Yeah, GameCube was definitely Nintendo, dude. Um, that, 
uh, these games getting moved over to the Switch, um, quite often, if they get ported to Switch, when, they, when they're done in a graphic style like this, the, which is supposed to be more heavily graphics intensive, more realistic looking, um, more detail oriented, they have to be dumbed down quite a bit to be able to be played smoothly on the Switch. Um, yo, gamer, we actually saw uh, we saw a video somebody did of Zelda uh, being um, made up into UE5. It looked really good, <laughs> but I mean that's not what Nintendo's about, right? And that's not that's not what I'm getting at either. I'm not expecting Nintendo to go uh, the route of you know. making everything on, on UE5, and that's not what I'm trying to get across. Uh, it's just for me over the about the past year and a half, to, you know, I, I've really noticed that just about everything that comes out looks dated. And I just think that, uh, yeah, it did look really good. It did look really good. For me, it just looks dated, man. There's, and again, you there, there's there's no argument behind the fact that there, the that hardware is, is old. For gaming and technology in general, technology evolves very, very quickly. And again, the average for a gaming console to turn over to a next gen is five to six years. They're pushing seven, you know? Well, I mean, part of it is going to be that, Pinky. Yeah, but you have to have hardware powerful enough to push a new engine too. So that kind of goes hand in hand quite often. Um, and, and I mean, for me, I, dude, I, I, I don't think that every single game on Nintendo is being built on the same engine. I could be wrong, but I, I, I mean, is it, I, I would, I would highly doubt that. But it's like every game that comes out has these same kind of issues that I see with it. Where it just looks old. For me, that's that's where it is for me. It doesn't look... Uh, and again, I, I mean, I guess if Nintendo figured they couldn't get away with it, they wouldn't be trying to push it out for 10 years. For me, it looks old. I'm not denying the fact the Switch is a great console. I'm not. I'm not. Well, absolutely. Well, that's what I'm getting at. It's a portable device, right? So it's using mobile technology. It's not using traditional um, big, chunky um, hardware that is very power intensive, right? They have to use portable mobile technology because that's what it is. It's a, it's a, it, it serves a dual purpose, right? The Switch does. And that's what's so amazing about it. It's very, very iconic. For what it is, it's changed gaming. It actually has. It's a very, very cool console. I am. I will never, ever argue that. I think the Switch is great. I really do. Um, it's that fact that it has to be because it is a, a mobile console. It's a mobile device, right? It's, it's a portable console. It has to be built in a way that is not power hungry. Which means the hardware itself is, is by proxy, not going to be as powerful as a traditional console. That's just what it is. Because they want it to run in a way that doesn't, you know, automatically smoke the battery out every time you want to, you know, go play it for an hour uh, off of the charger, you know. Um, so that's the way it has to be built, you know. And again... People are, are uh, welcome and are quite possibly going to um, disagree with my uh, perception here of, and my view of, of the Switch. But I, I just can't help but like everything I see come out doesn't look good visually. There's It looks old. It just looks old to me. I don't know.
Uh, surprise, Crunchyroll is making a video game for the Game Boy Color. <laughs> what? Let's watch this. I don't think you're necessarily wrong there, gamer. It's Crunchyroll Hime to the rescue. Help Hime stop the Y2K virus, fight enemies, solve puzzles, play games, and more. Or Hold on, L. Sick. I don't think you're necessarily wrong. Um. We've actually read some reports that have said, you know, that Nintendo is very hesitant and worried about moving on from the Switch. Like they don't necessarily know what to do next. And um, so I don't, I don't think you're wrong. And that's probably one of the big reasons, uh, if that is in fact true, that's, that's, Probably the primarily primarily the reason why they are just stringing out the the console as long as they can, you know. And it's still selling, so I mean you can't really dog them for it. People are still buying it. It's just my, I just notice it every time I see a game come out for the Switch. Every time I see a trailer for a new game for the Switch, I go, man, that looks old. I don't see a game come out for the Switch anymore. Uh, I haven't for a while where I go, man, that looks pretty good. I guess that's the thing I'm trying to get across, you know? And I, I'm not talking about something needing to look like built on UE5. Just have something come out that doesn't look dated. And I, 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 I can't recall a game that has come out over the past year to a year and a half that I was like, dude, that looks pretty solid. Doesn't look dated, you know. Um, maybe Bayonetta? I would need to go back and look. Maybe. Um, and one of the stranger pieces of news that we've heard today, renowned anime streamer Crunchyroll has announced that it's developing and publishing a retro-inspired video game based on its classic mascot, Jaime? Is that correct? Uh, thanks, Gamatsu. That uh, what's weirder still is that it will be played on Game Boy Color via limited run games. Yo, limited run games is a cool site. Um, Jaime's Quest is an 8 bit action adventure game set in 1999 where you play as the streamer's mascot who is on a mission to save a small town anime club from the threat of the evil Y2K. You thought this news couldn't get any stranger. One look at the above trailer, you will see that the company is going all out to embody those late 90s vibes. From the real world actors to the Power Rangers esque villain, yep. That takes us back. Uh, notably, we haven't seen a lot of gameplay footage so far, which is somewhat troubling when you consider the fact that this is a game. From the small amount that we can spy at the end of the trailer, however, it looks certainly retro enough. For an idea of the game's features, check out the following from Crunchyroll. And Piggy, uh, for your comment, man, I mean, look, I'm not a game developer either. So, um, I will never try to say that I know exactly what's going on in the development behind a console or games or whatever. I'm not saying it's easy either, you know. So, um, let's just be very clear about that. Uh, the game will be playable on the Game Boy Color via a physical cartridge created in partnership with Limited Run Games. This very cartridge is now available to pre-order for $45 uh, US in either Crunchyroll Orange from the Crunchyroll Online Store or in Limited Run Blue from Limited Run Games. Pre-orders will end on uh, 23 December with the game expected to ship in May. Get ready to blow the dust off that thing before loading it up. Yo, hey, if... Uh, there's also, let me just throw this out here. So Limited Run Games is an amazing site. Okay. This is the uh, the link to the site that actually has the um, the game. Look how look how cool that is. Limited Run Games does a lot of these really cool things for uh, like creating 
new cartridges for old systems and stuff like that. It's really, really neat. This is specifically, this is the link specifically for that title for Crunchyroll, Jaime's Quest. Um, but if you just go to their, their main site, you can see all this different stuff they've got, man. Uh, they're always doing really cool stuff on this. Collectibles and, and uh, games and things like that. It's really, really neat. Really cool site. So check that out. Um, also, there's a very cool piece of hardware that if you're not familiar, let me just pull this up real quick. Da -da 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 -da. The Pocket Analog, okay? So if you're into playing old school cartridges and stuff, this, especially for handhelds, okay, this is for handheld stuff, this might be up your alley, all right? Um, the Analog Pocket, this is like, I think roughly $220 US. Um, it's no emulation. It has been jailbroken at this time though, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's a tribute to portable gaming out of the box. It's compatible with 27, over 2,700 Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advanced game cartridges. Um, it also has adapters that allow you to play other cartridges from other handheld systems like Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, and Atari Lynx, and, and more. Um, it's really cool. You can see the differences, right, between playing like an old school original Game Boy game and then something like a Neo Geo game or something, uh, Game Gear game, something like that. Um, these are the adapters for the non Game Boy games that, uh, you need these adapters and stuff, but it, it's, it's, it, it's also a synthesizer and a sequencer for making music. Um, it's got a dock that comes with it, just like the switch does. Um, it's USB-C. It's got, uh, back buttons on it. It's a pretty cool looking little device. I haven't got my hands on one, but everything I've seen review wise seems like uh, it's a pretty cool little device. So if you are into playing old school cartridges for handhelds and stuff, this might be up your alley. Okay. I'll just go ahead and, and uh, link this as well for you guys. Classic PS1 series may return soon. It looks like a classic video game series that got its start on the original PlayStation, the PS1, is getting ready to make a return in the future. In 1996, the likes of Super Mario 64, Resident Evil, Tekken 2, Quake, Wave Race 64, Civilization 2, Tomb Raider, Pow Rapper, The Rapper, let's go, Super Mario RPG, let's go, Command and Conquer, let's go, Pokemon Red and Blue, let's go, and Duke Nukem 3D, Chewing that bubblegum were released. Dude, what, what an amazing lineup of games, dude. Uh, in other words, it was a pretty good year for gaming. And, of course, the list of memorable games from 96 is far from ex exhaustive. There are a ton of other titles you could tack on here, like Blood Omen, Legacy of Kane, yeah, which gave birth to the Le Legacy of Kane series. Uh, if you haven't heard this name in a while, it's because the series has been dormant for 19 years. With the latest release in the franchise coming all the way back in 2003 when Legacy of Kane Defiance was released. That said, it looks like the action-adventure series could finally be returning thanks to fan demand. Crystal Dynamics, the owners of the IP best known for Tomb Raider and Marvel's Avengers, recently sat out a, uh, sent out a survey to gauge interest in a revival of the series. This was done in October. A month later, Crystal Dynamics has returned, enough, uh, noting it's heard fans loud and clear. Quote, We want to gain a community perspective on what players are looking for should we revisit the land of Nosgoth and our iconic IP Legacy of Kane, said Crystal Dynamics and Eidos CEO Phil Rogers during a recent earnings call. In the past, we found that surveys typically get between 1,000 and 3,000 responses. But when we asked folks about Legacy of Kane, we received over 100,000 responses. 73,000 gamers completed it entirely. And if you were one of them, we thank you very much and we appreciate it. It was quite an effort given the survey was pretty extensive. Roger continued seemingly teasing this won't be the last thing said about Legacy of Kane. Quote, we saw the news of our survey shared across social and press platforms, and we really felt this was a great way to reignite this passionate fan community with this legendary PC and console game series. Rest assured, we hear you loudly and clearly, and we continue to update you on what if possible... Uh, what if possibilities ahead... I think that's a misprint there. On what possibilities lie ahead, I think, for Legacy of Kane in the future? Or what possibilities 
are ahead for Legacy of Kane in the future, something like that. Cool. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I remember playing that back in the day. Switch makes two popular exclusives lowest price ever. Here we go. All right. Um, let's just... The first of the two is Shin Megami Tensei V, a 2021 RPG from Atlas, the studio best known for Persona series. Upon releasing, the game garnered 84 on Metacritic, and since release, has sold over 1 million copies. It is currently $60 on the Nintendo eShop, but only 30 on GameStop and Amazon. Um, the other is Monster Hunter Stories 2 at GameStop, where it is at an 81 on Metacritic, sold over 1.5 million copies, and it's currently 60 on the Nintendo eShop, but only $25 uh, at GameStop, okay? I'm going to backtrack a second. I'm going to say one more thing about the Switch stuff. It is quite possible that the things that I am seeing that make a lot of these games uh, seem dated to me isn't necessarily just Nintendo's fault with the age of the hardware. I think that's a big part of it, but it could always be part of the developer's fault as well. So let's not be blind to that fact. I'm not, I'm not trying to lay blame all on Nintendo, but... I, I do highly feel, obviously, that their hardware is getting very dated. But there's always the possibility that the developer themselves could have done better, right? Of these games. Samsung is bringing... This is the last article I have, guys. Uh, let, me, uh, let me see if I can pull something up about the uh, PS5 portable real quick. Since uh, Gamer brought that up. We're not talking about the portable gaming station. We're talking about portable handheld device. Yeah. Um, not images, news, man. What is this? That is just a smartphone. Yep. This is talking about uh, Backbone 1, which works in tandem with an iPhone and the PS Remote Play app to allow you to enjoy your PS5 and PS4. This isn't the um, PS Portable stuff. Like what we were kind of talking about was the fact that PlayStation had talked about the potential for them to develop a new handheld console. The last one was the Vita, yeah. And um, there had been some like water cooler rumor mill stuff about a potential um, PlayStation, new PlayStation Portable console portable device and I'm, we're not talking about using a, a smartphone I'm talking about an actual PlayStation complete uh, portable console much like the Switch or a uh, Steam Deck I'm not seeing anything in that news search though really so I don't know. We'll keep our uh, eyes and ears. But Gamer, if you come across anything else, uh, let me know. Let me know. Samsung, this is the last article I have, guys. We'll get into some gaming after this. Um, if you have anything else that I haven't touched on you'd like to talk about, let me know. We can discuss. Cool. Um, but this is all I have, and we'll get into the, the, the Disco Elysium stuff, okay? Samsung is bringing Xbox and NVIDIA Cloud Gaming to more of its TVs. We've already hit on this here lately. We knew uh, we, we talked about Samsung rolling out these capabilities to their 2022 line of smart televisions, um, where basically they have an application that allows you to access some of the more popular cloud gaming platforms 
Xbox Game Pass, NVIDIA, um, a few of the others. I think it's up to like four others at this point. And, but it was only initially for their 2022 TVs. Looks like apparently their, their last gen TVs are also getting this capability, which allows you to just basically plug in a peripheral device like a controller or whatever and just game straight through the TV. No other hardware needed. You can just uh, game, uh, cloud gaming, streaming service stuff, straight through the TV. Uh, Samsung appears to have finally bowed to game gamer pressure after it announced it will be making uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming with Xbox Game Pass and NVIDIA GeForce Now cloud services available on more of its smart TVs. Apps for the two leading game streaming platforms had until now only been available in on the South Korean brand's lineup of 2022 TVs, such as the uh, QN95B, which, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. However, following mounting discontent from owners of older models, Samsung looks to have relented. The company confirming it will at last be allowing the apps to be installed on a wider lineup of its models before the end of the year. It's not all good news for cloud-based gamers, though. The company only announcing the app rollout for 2021 models, despite older Samsung smart TVs being seemingly well capable of running the apps. Oh, interesting. That was what I was wondering, was are, are the older ones, do they have the hardware to do this? Yo, gamer, have a great day, buddy. All right, happy Saturday, dude. Sorry you have to work, but I hope work goes well, man. Um, quote, when Samsung Gaming Hub rolled out earlier this year, stay safe, dude. Have a good day. On 2022 TV models, the number one question we received was, when is game streaming coming to my 2021 TV? Today, we are happy to share with our eager fans they will be able to play the games they love before the end of this year. A statement from Mike Lucero, Samsung Electronics Head of Production for Gaming, said, um, this list, all the 2021 smart TVs getting Xbox and NVIDIA GeForce Now apps, okay? Um, I'll link this in chat for you guys to take a look at if you're interested. Maybe you might you might have a 2021 Samsung TV uh, and want to see if this is one of the models. The brand also revealed that gaming subscription service Ut- Udemic and Amazon's Luna will also be part of the app rollout with AntStream and BlackNut set to follow next year. Um, yeah, we, these are the new, uh, cloud streaming services that I think got already got added to their 2022 TVs though, if I remember correctly. Samsung also announced it will also be rolling out a big improvement to NVIDIA GeForce Now performance on a number of its TV lines with the app set to be updated to allow support 4k at 60 frame game streaming. Um, in order to benefit from the improved frame rates and resolutions, you'll need a GeForce Now premium membership which will also give access to RTX on ray tracing, priority access to NVIDIA gaming servers, plus extended eight-hour session links. This is their analysis. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Basically, they're saying Samsung's cloud app rollout could have been so much more. Well, we understand Samsung not, Samsung not wanting the user its users to have a degraded experience on TVs that aren't up to the job of streaming. There's so many TVs from the last few years that promised powerful processors you'd hope uh, could run the services smoothly, but that currently look unlikely to ever be offered access to the apps. We're keen to hear the reasoning for the holdout, but as things stand right now, it's difficult to know just what Samsung may have have to gain by continuing to lock out a huge number of its users from the built-in game streaming party. Yeah. So if you're interested in, in uh, that list of TVs or more about this article, here you go, guys. It's in chat. And we'll be getting into the finale. I'm pretty sure this will be the finale for us. Uh, it shouldn't take us long, I, I don't think, to finish up Disco Elysium today. This will probably be the finale, but that's where we're headed, okay? So getting in there with old Harry Dubois. Or Raphael Ambrosius Casto, whatever you want to call him. I, I, he's good with either. Yeah. Um, you guys rock. Appreciate you. Happy weekend. Happy Saturday. Thanks for being a part of this, helping create such an amazing community and being part of this news segment. Anybody that's checking out these VODs later on, either on uh, our Twitch channel here or on our YouTube channel, if you're enjoying this content, see what you can do about coming and hanging out with myself. The rest of these amazing people that are part of this community 
when we go live at 6 a.m. CST every single day. We start off all of our streams with video gaming news before we hop into whatever gaming content we have slated for the rest of the day, okay? Uh, other than that, stay healthy, stay safe, be kind to one another. We'll catch everybody tomorrow for November 20th edition of Video Gaming News and probably playing some Evil Dead, all right? It's free on Epic. Go grab it. Come play, all right?